Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to share my October and November book haul with you. I say October because the only thing I really shared so far was a library book haul, but I didn't really show you the whopping two books that I purchased in October. So I just thought I didn't want to do a separate video for that. I thought that would be too silly. So I just thought that I would film a like collective haul for these two months since I did manage to get quite a few books this month. So I'm going to go ahead and share the two books that I got in October 1st. We will jump into my book of the month books, um, some books I were sent unsolicited, some middle grade graphic novels, um, some random books, and some thrillers because that's kind of what the book haul is looking like over here. Um, I tried to divide it to the best I could so if you're interested in like one thing or another you can like kind of speed through until you see something you're interested in. I want to go ahead and say that I have already read some of these books but I'm not really going to go into my thoughts on them. I'll just direct you to another video or you can wait until my monthly wrap up. Also, let's see what else I have to say. Some of these books are for particular videos that I hope to do in the future. And I think that's it. So let's go ahead and jump into the books. I'm holding my hand around this mug because it has hot chocolate in it. And it is so windy and so drizzly outside. And it's supposed to be like that all weekend. So I'm just embracing it with some cocoa and there is totally steam coming off this mug you probably can't see it on camera but i can totally see it in real life and it's just warming my hands mm. all right let's do this first book that i picked up in october is twice in a blue moon by christina lauren i love christina lauren's books that i've read so far and i just want to read more so this is one of my highly anticipated reads for this year i went ahead and read the first chapter and it didn't grip me right away but i hope the overarching story will it starts off with tate and her grandmother they're on this vacation and they bump into sam and his grandfather on the very first night tate and sam immediately are drawn to each other and they end up revealing secrets about themselves that Sam ends up using against Tate. Now 14 years later Tate really can't forget her first love of her life. They bump into each other and she's wondering if she can like ultimately forgive Sam for what he did and confront those fears and the betrayal and actually like be a true love. So excited about it but I wasn't immediately drawn in. The last book that I picked up in October was Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This may be shocking because I haven't been like a super fan of Lee Bardugo's writing and this is fairly long but this is her first adult novel and the other ones that I have read have been YA. Um, I read her trilogy and then I read the Six of Crows duology. I think that was my favorite over the trilogy. However, her writing is still not my favorite. I also tried a chapter of this and plus I've heard mixed reviews from people that really do love Leigh Bardugo. So I'm a little worried. So I plan on getting the audiobook of this and like reading along with that. And I want to do a dedicated reading vlog to this. I really don't know like too much about it other than um, there's a girl who goes to an Ivy League, there's these secret societies, and there's power and privilege and dark magic and murder, and it's all set against that Ivy League setting. So now let's jump into the true November books that I picked up. So the first three are my book of the month. Uh, I got Lisa Jewell's The Family Upstairs. I've read Lisa Jewell before. I really am interested in her writing and how she crafts stories. So I went ahead and picked this one up. This tells a story, it kind of reminded me of The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. So this girl receives, I guess like it's a DNA test or something. It just says she rips um, the envelope or the letter open to finally find out who she is. Um, so I don't know if it's like a DNA test or just like some other kind of document or whatever. She learns the identity of her parents and finds out that she inherits this mansion in London. Yeah, on the banks of the Thames in London's fashionable Chelsea neighborhood. When she gets there, I guess there's other people that have just been like waiting as well for that moment. And it kind of reminds me of like that family dynamic and the death of Mrs. Westaway, how they're like trying to claim it too. However, um, I guess when she gets there, she finds out some information how there was like a family upstairs and downstairs and the police were called and there was this like really weird, they 
got the call they got in like a 911 call and when they got there they found a 10 month old baby like perfectly fine and all the other siblings were gone but they found these other people dressed in all black positioned but they were like dead i don't know it sounds really weird it's hard to explain i'll talk to you more about it when i actually read it next up i had no idea this was coming out or anything like that but when i saw it as one of the book of the month picks i decided to get it because it immediately drawed me in it's actually a nonfiction story and it deals with like mental illness and mental health and um, psychiatric hospitals and stuff like that so it's called um the great pretender and it's by suzanne callahan and the little thing right here says um in 1973 a charismatic doctor convinced eight healthy people to commit themselves to mental hospitals. They had to prove their sanity to be set free. They, their undercover mission would change our understanding of madness forever. Guys, I am so interested in this book. It's not even funny. Also, um, while they're in there, um, it says that all eight emerged with alarming diagnoses and even more troubling stories of their treatment. I am both horrified and anxious to read this, but I'm also like super intrigued by this. So I definitely want to read this. I um, took lots of classes for ASL interpreting and I've heard and read stories about how deaf people were committed to these insane asylums uh, because they were deaf and stuff like that. And this is just giving me like those vibes. It's reminding me of that. It's the only thing I really have to like connect it in my brain. Um, yeah, so it says that what does this mean for our understanding of mental illness today? I am so, so, so interested in this. If you've heard about this, if you've read it, please let me know down in the comment section down below. I'd love to see like reviews about it, talks about it, all of that because I'm just like so interested and I want to do more like outside research other than just reading the book. Last book of the month was Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Yes, I know I got three books this month, but it makes up because I didn't get anything last month. Anyway, this is about our main character, Chloe Brown, who is a curvy plus size person of color and I love that she's featured here on the cover. Chloe Brown suffers from chronic illness and she's just kind of sick and tired of it um, and she wants to like break outside that bubble. So she makes this like wacky crazy list, um, enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorcycle, go camping, have meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex, travel the world with nothing but hand luggage and do something bad. Um, so she kind of needs like a teacher to help her through these tasks and she basically um, enlists this guy right here, Red Morgan. He's a handyman with tattoos, a motorcycle, and more sex appeal than 10,000 Hollywood heartthrobs. Next we're going to jump into two books that I received unsolicited from the Fiction Guild. These are the two books. The first one is Strands of Truth by Colleen Cobble. I did an entire reading vlog of this. I read it. Um, um, I enjoyed it, but I think I would have enjoyed it more if it was less about the marine biology and the pin shell research, and it was more about the actual, like, crimes that were taking place and the DNA test and stuff like that. But, um, so I do have a full video dedicated to this, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it's about our main character, Harper, who receives a um, DNA test and finds out that she has a half-sister and she goes and things go from there. The next one I have not read yet and it's State of Lies by Siri Mitchell and this one is um, this woman's husband is hit and killed by a hit and run driver but she discovers that he lied to her about where he had been going that day and then crazy things ensue and it mixes in a tangled and a web of political intrigue that clearly has no agenda and someone wants her dead too. So I'm actually going to pick this up. I usually don't share unsolicited books unless I am interested in reading them. In one case, I've already read it. In this case, I am kind of intrigued. So next two books I'm going to share are just like random books that fit in like no category. I picked this up from Book Outlet and I'm just like so excited about it. I'm such a fan. I got Stevie Nicks's um, 
biography, Gold Dust Woman, and she's such a queen, you guys. If you don't know who Stevie Nicks is, she's like the front runner or the front band member, whatever you call that, of the band Fleetwood Mac. And I guess Fleetwood Mac, I think it was like back in the 60s or 70s, um, let's see, 75. Um, Fleetwood Mac was this washed up English blues band. And finally, um, Stevie Nicks had joined the band and she was going to sing a song that she wrote herself for the band. And they just like zoomed to the top of the charts from there. Like just thinking about her music and her vocals and like her storytelling just gives me chills and gives me life. Um, I'm not super excited about reading it now that I've gotten it because the font is so small, you guys. Um, but I still really want to read it. It's just that I think I'm going to wait a little bit longer to read it than I initially would have. But just check out this pictures in the middle. I just love it. Look, here she is with Taylor Swift. Oh my gosh. The other random book that I picked up was Again But Better by Christina Riccio. Um, even though I really didn't have like a super interest in reading this, I definitely wanted to support fellow booktubers. And even though I can't necessarily call her a friend, she is a booktuber and I do want to like congratulate her on her first published book. This is about our main character, Shane, who has been doing college all wrong because all she's been worried about is keeping her parents happy, making really good grades and stuff like that. And she wants the full college experience. So she signs up for a semester abroad and things go from there because she decides to kind of check off things on her list that she's been wanting to get done and like truly experience college for like the journey that it could truly be. Then I picked up some middle grade. I got three middle grade um, stories to share with you. The first being from another booktuber um, and this is from Richard Denny and he's been one of my booktube friends since very early on in my channel like since I first joined booktube we kind of connected um, we don't chat as much anymore but I still really want to like support what he's doing and this one really sounds good um, it's middle grade it's about our main character Mateo who lost his older sister in a police um, he was that she was killed by a police officer and and it just sounds like it's really gonna like hit me in the gut but not like too hard because it's like a middle grade story but with all of the recent like school shootings and with uh, just police brutality and everyday injustice like it's just really gonna hit close to home and also the main character is a Mexican American boy and I don't read I don't think I've ever read anything from the perspective of a Mexican American boy. So I'm so glad that that's what the story is. Next up, I picked up Dear Sweet Pea by Julie Murphy. I loved this. I also did a reading vlog of this. This tells our story about um, Patricia Sweet Pea, whose fam her mother and father are divorced and her father moves two doors down from her mother. So she's dividing her, her time between these two homes. And in the middle of the two homes is this, um, kind of advice columnist for the local newspaper. She's splitting her time between the two houses. Um, she agrees to kind of be the go-between for her neighbor while she has to go off and take care of some things. So she's gonna like send letters off to the paper and then she's gonna send incoming letters to the, what was her neighbor's name? Um, Flora May. So she's going to send letters off to Flora May so she can answer them and then when she answers them she's going to send them back and then Sweet Pea's going to send them to the newspaper like put them in the mailbox and stuff. So um, she recognizes the handwriting on one of the envelopes and things go from there. The last middle grade book that I picked up is The Forgotten Girl by another booktuber. I'm all about supporting booktubers and their work so I will have these booktubers linked down below with the book that I bought for like an Amazon link. So definitely pick them up if you're a fellow booktuber because it's just like supporting the community as a whole. Um, so this one is about um, two best friends that are going off into the woods one night. Uh, yeah, they sneak into the woods to play in the freshly fallen snow and they stumble across this grave. And once they do that, they start having like weird things start happening and um, the girl starts having like crazy nightmares and they decide to team up and like properly 
Um, well, they start doing research on like the town and stuff and they discover that Avery's grave is actually part of an abandoned black cemetery and it's dating back to when like white people and black people were buried separately, like in different parts and they want to finally give her the um, proper respect that she deserves and they in the process they summon a jealous demanding ghost so it sounds really interesting it's middle grade it's short I should love it okay now I also picked up three graphic novels this month and I'm so excited about them the first one I've already read and I kind of did a full review of it um, it was called um, is pumpkin heads worth the hype so I'm talking about pumpkin heads by Rainbow Rowell and I absolutely loved this you still have time to pick it up before like you're under five feet of snow um, I think pick it up anytime but I really think if you're in the mood for autumn vibes definitely pick it up when you're like feeling the autumn or you need some autumn in your life because this is the book for that illustrations are wonderful the paneling is great the coloring is great the story is great the characters are great one thing i really loved about this like besides the fall vibes it had great friendship but i think i really got a sense of the characters sometimes it's hard to do that in graphic novels because like they're trying to tell the story but these two characters are so real to me because I feel like you really get to know them like from their dialogue and their friendship and all and what's happening in the story but how they're drawn shows so much personality it's just like unreal to me so I really really enjoyed this and I would love if Rainbow Rowell did another graphic novel um I haven't been reading I read Carry On and I was really disappointed and then she's kind of done like some other things that I just wasn't really interested in, but I really like her contemporary stuff. So Rainbow, please, contemporary is your jam. And I just highly recommend this. I rated it five stars, but check out that video if you're interested in more of my thoughts. And then because I read that and I was like such in a graphic mood kick, I picked up two more. Um, the first one is Bloom. And I love this cover um, by Kevin Panetti and Savannah. I'm sorry, I cannot say that last name. Um, but what I love about this, and I love when graphic novels do this, is it's actually all in the same color palette as the cover. Um, this tells the story of our main character, Ari, who works in his family's bake shop. But all he wants to do is move to the big city with his band and like become famous but he has to train someone in his spot at his family's bakery and he's training Hector and Hector is pretty much the opposite of Ari where Ari just wants to get out Hector is all about that bread life he is totally into the job but in the meantime there may be a little romance budding so I'm super excited about this and I just think it's gonna be super cute so male male romance next graphic novel I picked up is one that a lot of you guys have talked about, The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jin Wang. And this is about our prince who their parent, his parents want to marry him off. They're trying to find like the perfect bride for their son. But what they don't know is that um, the prince hires this dressmaker to make him these fabulous dresses and um, he goes out on the town at night dressed up as this a beautiful fashionista and I don't really know much more than that I really don't want to but I'm super excited about it the next second of books that I have are just thrillers that I'm really interested in reading the first one is when they found her and this is about a main character who has lost two of her children um, she's finally kind of getting out of that rut she has a five-year-old daughter now she's a um, like a journalist or something like that a reporter for the local paper and um, she there's this body of a newborn found in the woods and Molly is assigned to a story and things go from there the next one is by Sherry Lapina this is an unwanted guest so all of these travelers are in this lodge on like vacation but a huge snowstorm hits and then um, mysteriously one of the guests turns up dead it looks like an accident but then when a second guest dies everybody starts to panic so it's kind of like that isolation story and I think this will be really great to read in the winter time because of the blizzard and being isolated next up I picked up another Jillian McMillan I read her debut recently I talked to you guys about that but now I want to read I know you know and this one is a little confusing to explain 
um, but basically it has like podcast elements in it and that's just giving me those Sadie vibes by Courtney Summers. Um, so this one, I guess two kids were murdered like however long ago, 20 years ago, 11 year olds Charlie Page and Scott Ashby were murdered and now for as long as he can remember, filmmaker Cody Swift has been haunted by the deaths of his childhood friends. So he goes back, he's trying to uncover like secrets and lies and get more information and he does it all in podcast form. So I'm really excited. Next up, I picked up a Karen Slaughter book because I read Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter and I really enjoyed that. Um, I'm kind of more interested in her standalone stuff rather than her like serious stuff so I picked up The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter and I don't know too much about this um it's just two girls are forced into the woods at gunpoint one runs for her life one is left behind and that kind of reminds me it's that book that has like the purple cover and like the lights going across it I forget Far From You? No what is that book called? I totally forget, but it kind of reminds me a little bit of that, but I don't like to know too much going into Karen Slaughter's books, so I didn't really, really read too much other than I know this is by Karen Slaughter, and it's her standalone book, so I got it on Book Outlet for super cheap. And the last book that I got is Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. This has been a book that's been on my radar forever. I just finally bit the bullet. I saw it on Book Outlet, added it to my cart. So this is about two sisters that kind of disappear one night. 15-year-old um, Cass and 17-year-old Emma, they disappear. Um, as the investigation takes place, the family car is found missing. There's no trace of the girls. And then three years later, Cass returns home without her sister and she starts telling the story about this island that they were staying on. And I guess the psychologist um, is thinking that there's more to the story than Cass is letting on and that there's like holes in her story and stuff. Again, I don't know too much, but I'm really excited. Those are the books that I am hauling this month. I'm super excited about a lot of them as I've been talking for like 22 minutes. I hope I can cut this down a little bit, but I wanted to say thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you're having a lovely day or night and I'll see you again in another video soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.